Isn't that kind of the way, like, once you have some followers, you just create spinoff things where you're talking about, like, other things, and people also listen to that, and then they subscribe to that Patreon. Yep. And, and then you have a podcast network all of a sudden. Yep. The Last of Us. Check it out on HBO. <clears throat> okay, who's doing the intro? What's up, and welcome to the Mock Stars Podcast, everybody. I am Jordan Garcia, one of your hosts, and I'm joined by my two friends and esteemed colleagues, Chris Ritter. How's it going? Evan Kunai. Yo, 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 yo. What up, y'all? Before we go any further, hit up those socials. Links down below. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Do all the things, click all the things. Today we are talking about three things. We're talking about Phyrexia spoilers because, oh, god damn, they're tasty. We are talking about something. Yep. Uh, there we go. Hey. You didn't know about it. Staying <laughs> we are talking before. about it's something stuff. I don't even know about, and Chris is going to actually be teaching me live. New, me- new mechanic. Battle. New mechanic. Battle. I have no idea what it is, and it's going to be awesome. Jordan's our resident dumb guy today. I'm your resident dumb guy. I don't know shit about what we're talking about, and I'm going to learn right here along with all y'all. Main freaking topic, y'all. We're talking about bling. We're bougie. We like our shiny cards. We like our flashy cardboard. But it's so goddamn expensive to these days, and there's 10 Elish Norns coming out in the next set. Is Which there, one do is you there really 10, or is that an exaggeration? There is literally 10 varieties. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, all will be one. <laughs> all will be 10 all will be 10. <laughs> <laughs> be 10. <laughs> yeah, so it's exactly the point. We're talking about how are we blinging these days how, versus how we maybe used to do it. What are we targeting? I know we're trying to generally spend a little less money on magic than we used to, but you know, when you're feeling bougie, what are we going for? What is there some budget pickups, or are we saving for some splashy cards? We'll talk about all that. In our main segment. So let's get started. Evan, I know you want to tell me about this card. What are we talking about? We're talking what, about Phyrexia spoilers? We're talking about the Phyrexia spoilers, dude. What you got for me? Yeah, there have been a few really spicy uh, spoilers coming out like lately. Every day and there's a bomb. Honestly, yeah, every day there's something new, something bombastic. At, at this point in uh, history, in January, nearly the entire set is spoiled, right? We have, yes. we have all of the mythics and rares now. With I today's drop? think we have all the rares. I'm not okay. sure if we have all the mythics yet. Okay. Uh, I think we're still missing like a green mythic or something like that. But it is January 23rd. Someone can correct me in the comments if uh, they wish to do so. But I am super stoked on all of these Dominus. One, the Dominus are freaking great. Domini. Domin- <laughs> Domini. Dominaria. Shut Ooh. up. You dumb guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you had a, is that not the plural? <laughs> no, uh, you you had a kernel of something there. <laughs> yeah. it connected right. one and two and made three. Uh, no, honestly, the spoilers for me, uh, the mythics and the rares, they're going to take over the game. Like, I think a lot of these are the set is like straight gas. And I think they're doing that because the Phyrexian mana is going to make these games go by really quick. But I, is that. In general, I I'm, or you're talking about standard. I think for like constructed. So okay. like for draft, for sealed, you know, you go to a pre-release weekend. In the last few sets, the games have been pretty slow. I think we saw that in Brothers War with like the development of Power Stones. It takes a few turns to set up. In this, there's just, it seems like such a fast set compared to the ones we've seen in the past. That Sorry, we're talking limited. We're talking limited. Yeah. You said yeah. constructed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm the resident dumb guy right now. Dumb um, guy was confused about what <laughs> yeah. the dumb thing you said. <laughs> so I'm actually super hot on Magmatic Sprinter as far as limited goes. Uh, it's two and a red. It is a Phyrexian Warrior with haste, a three-two that says when it enters the battlefield, put two oil counters on target artifact or creature you control. At the beginning of your end step, return Magmatic Sprinter to its owner's hand unless you remove two oil counters from it. There is a lot of oil counter and proliferate base things happening in this set. I am wondering, I, I, you already see all the pieces there, that you can make a bunch of different types of decks out of both of those things and doing different things. Right, and it's just like cards like Exuberant Fusling, like in combination with Magmatic Sprinter, gets kind of crazy. That's one red for a Phyrexian Goblin Warrior that's a zero one. one with Trample, and it says it gets plus one, plus oh for each oil counter on it. 
And then when enters the battlefield, and whenever another creature, uh, <laughs> when another creature or artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put an oil counter on exuberant fuseling. So with all that proliferate, and this is just mono red, the way this works. Uh, and with magmatic sprinter, you're just stacking the oil counters on this baby for like one big punch. Like this guy's crazy. Yeah, and the fact that the sprinter just bounces back to your hand, you could you know, and then cast it next turn, two more counters, but swing for three back to your hand. Like it's going to be a target you're going to want to kill. Uh, unfortunately, both are uncommon, so it's un- unlikely that you'll see that combo all the time when you're drafting or when you're in sealed. Um, but those are like two cards that I'm really hot on as far as like uh, the spoilers in the last few days. I mean, it just seems like a really aggressive curve in a limited deck. Uh, I will say about exuberant fusing, I just get a kick out of when zero ones have trample. <laughs> yeah, yeah it really just does something for me. Like Rograk. It's fun. They're goofing a little I bit. They're, they're hoping you break it. It's, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, I got one spicy little doodad here. Uh, it is this Ikum, Iker Moon Gauntlet. That is a sick card. They're, it's uh, pretty cool. Uh, man, uh, Super Friends are not good in uh, Commander, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Never heard of them. But I think that Iker Moon Gauntlet, you know, there's something, maybe. Yeah. There is, like, I think when it comes down to all these sets, Especially because you have Kazmina, too. So you have, yeah. like, you know... Yeah, all these. Yeah, they gain all these abilities. Let me read it real like, quick. It's a. Uh, it's two and a blue for an artifact. It says planeswalkers you control have zero proliferate and neg twelve. Take an extra turn after this one. Proliferate. Pro, pro, proliferate. Welcome to Earth. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Anyway, first time we've ever seen uh, planeswalkers gaining an ability, let alone static abilities like this. Very interesting. Uh, and then also has some kind of. Silly text on the bottom here that says, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, choose a counter on target permanent. Put an additional counter of that kind on that permanent. So pseudo-proliferate. So you could just take the first line of text with the whole groundbreaking planeswalker thing, and I would still play this card. You get all that shit out mm-hmm. of there, and it's actually insane. Now it just reaches out to every other strategy that plays counters. Right, like we're Displacer Kid In is freaking great like it has the same text on it but just slightly pivoting you're not flickering something instead you're countering you're getting a counter like this is so breakable so easily yeah the point that i want to make with cards like this and with this set in general like you look at some of the other spoilers and all the mythics that are available i want to play all of these Mm -hmm. right yeah there are uh distinct strategies that you can build around all of these cards like there is definitely such a thing as trash mythics, right? We're all familiar with that. Yes. We've, we pull them almost exclusively. <laughs> uh, but all of the mythics in this set so far, there are powerful strategies that it seems uh, fun to build around and play around. And that's also true of, of like recent sets uh, where you have things like Portal Portal to Phyrexia, for example, yes. where it's just like, you know what? I, man, nine mana artifact doesn't do a ton when it comes into play. I still want to play it. Well, you know, yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. And there's decks being built around it in constructed. So, you know, when it's something that reaches from limited into a constructed environment, that there's something there. Yeah. And with all the like mythics that are playable here, we can only spend so much like the value of certain sets can only build so high. Right. And it takes a lot of time. Like when cards go out of print, that's when they start rising in price. So at release, there's no way in hell that, like all these cards deserve to be over twenty dollars. Like they all do. Like they all do something that breaks the game or breaks parity in a certain way. But if every card was worth twenty dollars, then everyone would just go out and buy boxes and profit. I mean, that's what they want you to think and what they want you to do. So yeah, I guess my point is that it would none of these are gonna cost what we think they should cost until years down the line. Yeah, I mean if well, let's just look at Brothers War. There's what five cards that are over twenty right now. Pretty low right. costed set. And, and if we look at the past year, year and a half, like Neon Kamigawa is the only set with some forty dollar cards. Um, that isn't a like is Modern Horizons two within that cycle? No, I, I think that's outside the time mm-hmm. framer. But you know what I mean? Like, uh, it's hard to get there, right? It's it's hard to get value. We're not quite in the junk wax era of magic the gathering but man uh the short-term profit focused shareholders uh at hasbro sure would love that right right for you to think that like wow i'm just gonna go like 
blow a ton of cash on boxes so that like their numbers spike. Their numbers are going to spike with this set. Just look at the content. Mm-hmm. Like the cards are amazing. So uh, and they're doing and they're you know they're creating new chase variants that are actually kind of interesting with this set, which they dip their toes into with like say the galaxy foils being a new treatment introduced to Magic uh, with Infinity recently. Yeah, on the the bougie side of things, the oil foils that we're going to be getting in this set are going to be crazy mm-hmm. and hard to find. Yep. Yes. Yeah. I I've we were talking about it before we started recording. I've pre- order two of those uh complete bundles like yeah it seems like a good investment right now for sure not even an investment just like cool card i I get you know it's uh maybe pre-spending the money because i think those uh some of those oil treatment cards if you get the right pulls and even the basic lands they're going to be money cards like you see the galaxy foil uh all you know infinity basics and i was looking at the swamps recently i thought about like completing a mono black deck with those swamps and they're like 10 bucks a piece on tcg player yep you know yeah, 320 dollars yeah a lot of these full art lands don't have a ton of value over long term but these ones seem something that's gonna be like sought out or sought after and pretty special and high value yeah i think the accessibility for this with how many variants they are printing is going to be pretty high i wouldn't bite hard on pre-orders now like as Mm -hmm. far as like singles singles oh for sure yeah Yeah, the msrp on like bundles and stuff like that probably a great price you're not going to find them much lower but singles right now you got to see how this stuff like is going to iron out because there's so Mm -hmm. much power in this set like truly uh, one of the cards that i love uh, from like another spoiler is the Argentum Masticor. I was well, just going to talk about that one. Yeah, well, this isn't like literally anything like super powerful. I think this it's so good though. It is very very good. I'll be the dumb guy. What is that card? I'm not familiar <laughs> with that one. It is a five mana colorless artifact creature with first strike protection from multicolored. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice Argentum Masticor unless you discard a card. When you discard a card this way, destroy target non-land permanent in opponent controls with mana value less than or equal to the mana value of the discarded card. It is a 5-5. Five, five. Oh, that's spicy. Five mana, 5-5 five, five and colorless yeah. with first strike and pro multicolor. Yeah, that's already good. That is actually insanely good. Is it limited. legendary? It is not. Eee. All right. Well, still good. <laughs> no i mean it's just gonna be bonkers when you like draft this thing and then you're just so like good. yeah i'll pitch a four drop and just pop whatever you got oh it's so good man yeah and, like clearing the blocker so you get the five through right i would happily and the thing is is like i was telling jordan that the reason this is great is because you can pitch a land and blast a mite like there are token creatures all over this set so you can literally just like Everything that you pitch is going to have value. Buddy, I love to pitch lands. You know that. <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you do. So Check out our previous episode card, on Borborygmas. Yeah, this card might be for you. Hey. Uh, I don't know. That's that's uh, some of the spicy stuff I've been seeing from the recent uh, sets. We are actually committing to doing a set review for this set as well. So stay tuned. Um, Mockstar's first ever set review. Exactly. Oh, hell yeah. Yep. And we're going to break it down by color and have, I think we're, we're aiming for six episodes just to cover the whole thing. Yeah. Like without many making episodes. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or who knows? Maybe I, we'll talk about a lot. Yeah. I do lean like not like as long as this one or maybe a little shorter. Like I've just listened to so many that are three and a half hours. Do you hear this passion? Do you hear my passion? We have to... We are going to talk forever about this, and we better put a cap on it because I could just go on. This passion cannot be contained. Phyrexia, you just all will be it. one hour? All will be <laughs> <Yeah>. one... <laughs> all episodes, 45 minutes flat. <laughs> Minimum. All right. Uh, let's move on. We are talking about a new card type it was sort of spoiled on the new atraxa that was revealed last week um and it just is in reference to a new card type called battle battles very interesting battle can i just say up front that i hate this before i know anything about it i hate it you hate having to learn new stuff i hate when they're out of good ideas and they're like, all right, let's just start breaking this game and making it worse. You Say just hello. learned about this idea. You know nothing about it. New card Instinctively types. hate Make it. new cards, not new card types. Say hello oh. to the Magic's new color, purple. Exactly the same concept. All right, please continue. I hate it, but let's go. Uh, we know nothing about it except for it's a new card type. Okay, fantastic. That's terrible already. Are we done? 
<laughs> I, I, so we saw it on a tr- on the new Atraxa, right? Yeah, we saw it on Atraxa. When she enters the battlefield, you get to look at blah, 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 and put a battle in your hand, whatever. Uh, it's a new card type that we can really only speculate on since there is no information. We don't even think that it's going to be in this set, it, which is kind of... It's not. I think it's coming in March of the Machines, yes. probably. So, But it was yeah. confirmed by Morrow this week, yeah, which is what's right. notable. Yeah, so there are a lot of theories out there, and I think Ritter, you had said earlier the probably the most likely uh, some sort of mini game type situation. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is like uh, a card similar to an enchantment, and I guess this like brings new value to anything that says target non land permanent because it will be a permanent on the battlefield until it goes away. Is, is it confirmed that it's a permanent? It is a permanent. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, well, it, people are saying that it could be like one of the world enchantments, like yeah, or granting back. emblems or things of that nature, like you know, uh, things that are already contained within the rules of magic, but were clunky, you know, which is which is something that, uh, you know, magic design does a lot. They return to mechanics that didn't work out in playtesting, and they give it some time, and they're like, well. Uh, now we, now that we have this deciduous mechanic and this deciduous mechanic and we did this thing, uh, the players get the idea of how to, impl- you know. Yeah, you know. it's gonna, it's gonna make a lot of sense when it does hit and you're gonna read what the card does and you're gonna be like, ah, duh. Yeah, like, like sagas aren't that complicated. You know? Right, 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 right. Like they are... A, whether they're a subtype or whatever, they're just an enchantment that yeah, has... Yeah, they're an enchantment, yeah. and they're sort of like cumulative upkeep, which you already know the rules of, and that sort of thing. Like, you, you kind of get the gist of it, and you can apply it to this new thing. Yeah. Jordan, don't be scared. I have to read so many new words. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be real hard. I hate it. Dumb guy. I, hate uh, it. I love it. I get. I love reading I cards. just, like, when? Do, at what point am I flipping the card over, like, folding yeah. down the second segment? I don't think it's I... more, more if it already exists. Yeah, I'm gonna flip the card over. <laughs> People yeah. have been like dreading it's not that foretell. Day when it becomes like a multiple piece like, game, game piece. <laughs> it's, it's a like, meld card, but you, it's only so you can read the rules text. <laughs> yeah, it's like a trifold. Like you gotta. Uh, 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 I'm not. Am I damaging it? No. Okay, and the battles. Yeah. So as Chris was saying, are supposedly, in theory, a mini game. So or even similar to initiative. Yeah, so in in I guess as an example what I've been reading is that like it would say um when a player draws 3 cards, the battle is over and then an effect is earned by mm-hmm. winning the battle. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's something that like if you're building a deck around this where hey, if I'm playing Xerus and this like new battle is like, hey, first person to draw 3 cards is, you know, going to like trigger this and then the battle goes away and i get the bonus effect like that's great that's exactly what i want i wouldn't hate to see like a uh like a coveted jewel type effect you know where you everybody's fighting for that like a it, mono, oh you enjoyed that though last week when we were fighting over a coveted jewel well that's because if i play coveted jewel ain't nobody getting it Ooh. <laughs> yeah osgir will see to that <laughs> No, I think that's exactly what it is. It's something, it's like a world enchantment that there can only be one on the battlefield at a time. And then once the objective has been achieved, whoever has earned that objective earns the benefit. But allegedly. 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 Yeah, we're yeah, theorizing yeah, yeah. here. We, yes. we know nothing. We'll probably know within, I don't know, like a three weeks or a month. Can't wait right? to tell you guys you how know, February dumb we sound spoiler. right now. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> let's all be wrong. Yeah, in my head, I was thinking, guy. like, when you're telling me about it, I was thinking kind of like uh, how dungeons were introduced with mm-hmm. the D&D sets, uh, but it's not exactly the same because it is a certified new permanent type. I will say which that is I, interesting. I agree with you that I do hate that, like, there have been times when they implement an outside mechanic, something completely outside the game that you have to keep track of, like, day and day night. Day and night and the yeah. dungeons and like they aren't affected by proliferate they aren't affected by anything you can't like change them unless a card specifically refers to that but i mean i i think the solution to that is just like normal social courtesy which might be a lot to ask of magic players um but it's like you know if you have a deck that cares about day night you're just in charge of keeping track of it. I say it every time it happens. Yeah. They're like yeah. it becomes day. And it's like, great. That's your job now. Yep. Yeah. Or if you have an initiative deck, like have a copy of those initiative cards for everyone to just look at and reference or like, you know, 
you're in charge of it. Like if you're putting it in the game, you're in charge of it. It's like don't be playing the storm deck when it's storm is twenty six and asking me what your storm count is. I am not doing math for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's yeah. literally like the the whole day and night thing could have been alchemy like it really could have been where it's like on arena they can track that shit so easy like 100 percent. you know it just happens automatically boom boom bang you know and then it's like you start implementing things to the physical card game that require extra game pieces They'll show up with dungeons now yeah that like in case someone didn't you know has a dungeon card but they forgot to bring their dungeon that oh, i gotta look it up on my phone you know like something like that it's just the outside mechanics at a certain time like in development around the time that dungeons were introduced it felt like we were getting we we're being flooded by them i'm glad that they're not necessarily incorporating more of that but i'm hoping that this is a permanent that it is a permanent that is you can interact with like and that there are cards specifically de- like to deal with battles i mean there's tons of cards that say exile or destroy target permanent which then encompasses this right right exactly. but yeah what he's saying is the fact that you can now target it versus something like uh, like the dungeons, you're just completely in, mm-hmm. in uninteractable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, where you can just, you know, venturing into the dungeon is something that you can't interact with at all. You know, I guess uh, experience counters were something where people are like, oh, that's not, inter- you can't interact with that. But Or uh, energy counters. Yeah, energy. Yeah. But you can proliferate them. You can. And even, uh, I guess you could say emblems. Emblems are a thing that is not a permanent that you cannot interact There's with. There's nothing that interacts with emblems. Nothing. So I guess there has to be a payoff for emblems. Like you have to be able to like alt the planeswalker to give an emblem usually. Except for Chandra, <laughs> Awakened Inferno. Where it's just like, no, you get the emblem and then you're just stuck with it. Just even if that player goes away. Yeah, even if that player goes away, the emblem is still attached to you. So yeah, battle is intriguing. Hey, guys. Bling. Hey, let's move on to our bling topic. We are bing, uh, bing, bing, bing. we're talking about some shiny ass cardboard. Chris, you said you just got some stuff. What are we talking to? Uh, well, bling is more than just shiny cardboard. It's also other things you can spend money on in the shiny game. accoutrements. S- shiny accoutrement. Yep, that's right. Yeah, it can be from sleeves to deck boxes to. Dice. I mean, your play mats can definitely be blingy. There you go. You hit it. Hit yeah. it on the nail. I, New play mat. New playmat. I have not had a stitched edge playmat yet. Really? So I got myself a stitched edge, edge playmat with a little Frank Frazetta art. Hey, Which one? Uh, the Skull boy. King. Nice. Nice, dude. Ooh. Yeah. Is that from this recent Secret Layer set? Uh, no, I, I ordered it off uh, Inked Gaming. Although it is in the Secret Layer set, it's the it's the art that is also on Dark Ritual. I did. Oh, word. Okay, that one's great. Yeah, yeah. I saw the um, advertisements on Instagram for like all the like Inked Gaming, Frank Frazetta stuff. Mm-hmm. And I scrolled through that and I was just like, wow, they actually have stuff that's not magic related that I would still love to have on a playmat. But it's like Frank art? Yeah. Dude, that's yeah. Actually, you'll yeah. have to get it. Sick. You oh. We're going to see it tonight. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, I can't wait to see oh, it. Check oh. out Inked gaming i need my 12th mat let's go yeah send send me some promo codes or something i said your name on a podcast yeah (laughs) uh bling comes in many forms and now that we've been talking about phyrexia we sort of like dipped into it a little earlier but there are 10 new versions of specific cards and how do you decide which card is the right one for you and how do you just keep up with the the craziness when every set has 30 options of you know the top chase mythics you will go insane trying to keep up with and broke yeah you will go broke 100 percent. there's like all those uh the collectors out there who will like uh who are bolt collectors like they want to get every lightning bolt ever printed and like it is an admirable cause like there are some that are really really expensive absolutely love it love the cause um but there just is an extent where i cannot collect every single version of that elish norn because it is going to cost 50 plus just for the base variant. Yeah, I could see um, so one or two of these Elish Norns like being in the same price range as, say, like the Hitetsugu. That's like mm, just not yeah. even a card that anyone's playing, but those neon ink treatments are like a couple hundred bucks. The lack of accessibility. Yeah. Yeah, Woo. yeah when I started seeing those prices like come out with the Hitetsugu, was unreal. I could not believe that there was like what. What was the most expensive one? Like the yellow or the green? Or yellow or red or blue or, or green. Red. One of those colors. And like honestly, they do, they look cool as shit. Yeah. Like, you know, I have the all the other Neon Ink uh, variants that they've printed. Like the Hall of the Bandit Lord, the uh, Boseju. 
uh, who shelters all, uh, and the ghostly prison. And are, is there another out there somewhere? Probably, probably there's a fourth one, in that secret lair. Yeah, there's one more card. In that yeah, card. I can't oh, remember. Well. But you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, those are playable cards. Free from the real. A, oh, okay. There yeah. you go. Uh, playable cards versus a card I would in no way play, and especially not at that price. No, 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 never. Uh, I don't know what it like. If you bought that card, is it playable? Like, it's not. I was gonna say it's not even a good card. Yeah, it's. I mean, it kind of is. It's an interesting card. If, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the cards that generally like cards are the price of them is generally determined by what they do on the battlefield or what they do for a game plan or a strategy. Um, this one, I have. I've never even seen it like played. Yeah, before. And this isn't even a reserve list, list situation. Yeah, it was you know just, they could reprint this tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely <laughs> just the scarcity thing, and I, I know the prices have come down a little bit, but they still remain very high, and it's yep. just dependent on who is selling it and how they want to budge, but. A little off, getting a little off track here. Uh, I mean, it's bling. bling. We're talking yeah. about We're talking bling. Talking and many bling. things are blingy. Okay, maybe I'm the dumb guy. I will say we just met some new people at our magic night because we played at a brewery, and the people we ran into gave me some major envy on their shiny accoutrement. Mm -hmm. They had freaking wormwood boxes with just beautiful dice, like not even just like a d20 here and there, but like. 20 perfect d6s that are yes. all just like crispy pearlescent like you could have every token on your battlefield would have had it yeah oh, those wormwood boxes were so sexy bro and i feel like i have everything organized for my like magic night setup except for tokens and dice still i still haven't figured out my my ideal situation for that and these guys were balling out yeah made me a little little jelly yeah there were some like uh I think we were sitting there and we we're just like, oh, yeah, this is your, like, the guy was just saying, hey, this is my bougie deck. And, like, pulled it out of the Wormwood deck box, had all those immaculate dice. And then I saw him shuffling. And then he was just shuffling, like, uh, Borderless Foil Mana, mana Crypt, like, Borderless Foil Mana Vault, like, all of it. It was definitely a powerful deck with a lot of bling. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, he likes, to, he likes to bling, like, we have our, our one bling deck. That was his, like, one bling deck. Yeah, yeah. I think that when it comes down to Magic players in Commander, there's got to be one budgetless deck. Something you love so much that you're willing to build it out completely to the highest, highest rarity and just... Go like you just have it forever and you play it and you're yeah. like, hey, I, you know, I have a gift card or, you know, trade in credit. Here's 40 bucks. I'll get the promo foil of this card, swap it in, swap it out. You know, I'm kind of doing that right now with uh, proxy decks I'm doing. Like I have proxy decks that I really like. There are, are other decks I've already had in the past or ones I've been really enjoying and plan on keeping around. And kind I'm not like a try before you buy situation. 100%. Decks. And instead yeah. of like me going and buying 100 cards, maybe I just pick up you know one card and instead of buying just the base because i had to buy all of them at once i just buy the foil yeah and well, i'll swap it in and out yeah that's i mean that's great that's like kind of, kind of what i'm trying right now i mean it sucks like if you want to build a decent deck and like in our play group we played a decent power level so anything new you build if you want to build it with real non-proxy cards you're looking at a few hundred dollars even if you have a lot of the stuff lying around yeah that's um, like closer to a thousand dollars which is idiotic it is idiotic for anyone to just be blowing that money on things you don't need uh, this is an advertisement for your local FedEx print shop <laughs> yeah yeah and so like you know they have mana traders for MTGO like don't spend all your seriously yeah yeah just spend 10 bucks at the FedEx print shop, try it before you buy it, That's, and then yeah. bling it out. Evan like built it. this Atraxa deck yeah. and then took it apart two weeks later. Like, imagine if you had sold cards back, shelled out some cash, bought it all, you were going to buy some foils anyway, and then you hated it. Been yeah. pot committed to a bad deck. Yeah, like I, like, I printed this out, and I put it together and just like sleeved it up, played it a couple times and realized that I just didn't love the deck the way I used to. I was super excited to build it. You can feel my passion in last week's episode. You can check that out on the in the link below. I'll put that in the description. But uh, I loved the deck when I first built it. And it was incredibly powerful. It tracks that always has been and always will be. But the reputation it carries at the table just feel bad, like felt bad for me. I didn't have fun. And so, yeah, I would have felt like a like a dumbass honestly i would have felt like an idiot like to be like i'm gonna buy my borderless foil atraxa which i had at one point it's like 80 dollars now and i just i just couldn't do it to myself mm -hmm. like so i'm so happy that i proxied it like i still have the deck sitting here it's just printer paper instead of magic cards and i guess it breaks my heart because uh when i print these decks out and i cut them out 
They are not foils. <laughs> we do like our foil decks. That is the downside. Now, now, Evan, in not spending money on this Adraxa deck, blinging it out, did you get any other bling in the meantime? You know, I have abstained. Okay. Like, and it's not admirable. It's not due to my lack of love for the game because I am one who wants to make a surefire investment, you could say, bling investment on cards now. And I, I've definitely like uh, held myself accountable for how much money I'm spending on magic. If I'm spending money on magic, it's either on arena to like continue my skill as a draft player, mm. um, or I'm using that money to upgrade like decks that I already have um, through other means, through like new sleeves or a new deck box or whatever. The accoutrement. Yeah. We I'm also, love our accoutrement. <laughs> yeah. I'm also putting a lot of thought into, you know, like this. I love, I love just like thinking about like this podcast and stuff like that. So if I'm, if I'm thinking about spending money, I'm actually just theorizing more than anything uh, so that I can have more st stuff to talk about here. I mean, when you're down to proxy everything, it's pretty easy to take the pressure off feeling like you have to spend money on cards all the time. Yeah, so I just built Rive uh, Liberated Primeval, which, by the way, slaps. I fucking love it. I we'll can't see. wait to play. Yeah, we'll <laughs> see. Get ready to lose on your new play map. Ooh. <laughs> all right. Let's go. <laughs> it's Magic uh, Night, baby. We shit talking. But I put the deck together and I played some hands and I'm just like, oh shit, Like this deck really pops off. And then there are some hands I get. I'm like, okay, it definitely has its stinker hands. You know, I would have hated to like go out and spend the money. If I was going to bouge it up, like get ball bougie and like really dress this thing up and bling it out, I would be completely in the house of getting like all of this like galaxy foil shock lands which i bought just like standard foil shock lands i would that would immediately go into this deck i would go out and i would target like basic lands that fit the vibe of mm -hmm. this not necessarily from dominar united because i don't think those do but this like this dragon deck actually has a lot of personality i think people misread writhe like when Rythe was released, I think they misread him. They, they at most it says you create one or like, I think that's the idea is that people say it creates one dragon. I I don't know if people misread cards so much as Wizards of the Coast prints lots of rules text. Yeah, constantly. So I don't know if you knew this, but Rythe will literally create a dragon for every creature that was dealt excess damage. All right, save it for it's the freaking Rythe episode. Uh, okay, whatever. Jesus but Christ! If I'm blinging this thing out, like I don't think I'm going for the stained glass, like because I want the theme to be consistent throughout, and none of the other dragons have that. Yeah, there is a limited number of stained glass treatments that you can pursue. Yeah, so you can't even put prismatic ending in there. No, it's just yeah. co completely out of, uh, not an option as mm -hmm. far as like my personal style goes. So uh, all the basic lands need to be matching like in a specific way. If I'm going for galaxy, like galaxy foil, sh like shocks, I'm probably going for galaxy foil basics. And then uh, beyond that, uh, borderless foil goldspan dragon would need to be yeah. an absolute must. Yikes. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. there are some cards that are so old that they don't necessarily have premium options. And so you got to go for the most premium option so like i put for expensive option expensive, expensive option, you're option. yeah, yeah. <laughs> reasonably expensive option i think i used to justify it more than i used to there's so many decks i can't believe that back in the day i was building this zakama deck back in the day it was like what three or four months maybe five months ago oh lost in the mist of time four months yeah ago. yeah right yeah. lost <laughs> and i spent 70 dollars on a judge foil land tax because I was just like, I need it for the deck. Ooh, what and this is my budget. Is it is it a third art or is it one of the other two arts? Uh, it's one of the other two arts. It's the yeah the DC. It's the world. not possibly uh, the chest. It's like the treasure yeah. chest with the, like the sun and the mountains like yeah. rolling out of it. Yeah, it's not the yeah it's one of the other two arts. There is the original art on land tax, which is kind of a feel bad for reasons uh, that are in. Co hate. Yeah, it's got that yeah. like greedy dude on the front. Yeah, yeah, it feels bad. It feels like Watto from uh Phantom Menace, where it's right. just maybe a little racist. Yeah. <laughs> I just didn't I didn't like yeah. that artwork. You spent eighty dollars on a racist card, Evan. No, no, I didn't. No, no, he got the not did, racist did, art. Not racist. Not yeah. racist. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let it be known. <laughs> blinging nice. blinging shit out. Uh when it came to Zakama, I took everything as high as it could. And now that I have the pieces, which is like a big part of blinging it out. If you want a deck to be blinged out, it also has to be powerful. Um, 
It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. Well, I I, you know, I said earlier, pot committed. Like, once you start bling something, you start feeling pot committed, and you've spent yes. all this money on it. So, uh, you know, you're then you're going to keep spending money on it. Like, you feel like you need to keep spending. Yeah, I, I feel, want to fill out the dual, uh, dual land yeah. lots. I also yeah. feel like before we even get into the, like, when Some we're in cost fallacy is maybe the other way to put that. True. Yeah. yeah, but I also feel like we're always upgrading deck-wise and making stronger decks anyway. Like, mm-hmm. And then in the process of that, we also like, all right, I'm loving it. I am upgrading it because I'm loving it. And now I'll start picking up those foils and some of the bougie options. Right. So I'm excited to play this ride deck. And I think it's one of those, I hate to be like that Naya faithful constantly making naya decks but um it's the one deck i want to like see if it works so i can start buying like start looking at like yeah borderless foil options building cards maybe selling stuff back Mm -hmm. i i I, support your strong naya brand though by the way (laughs) thank you you (laughs) one of us has to be naya yeah and uh this is a complete enchantress build i'm super stoked for it it is very funny like our whole play group has very different colors yeah yep uh, Jordan, what do you go for when you blink? Well, yeah, up? that's a that's a good point. I mean, so I also have my budget list deck. It's my CDH deck, which is funny. We haven't played CDH in like the last eight months, so I have been pretty much playing with not like with proxy decks essentially and not enjoying any of the foils I own or the reserve list cards I have. So there's been something I've been thinking about of like maybe pulling that apart and actually building some bougie mid decks that I can enjoy and play all the time. So I guess I'm I'm proxying now until I find the deck I'm ready to commit to because I have already have a ton of the great like staples in the bougies like the box topper force of will and mana crypt and all that bullshit and stuff so it'd be pretty easy to like throw that into something well i know you're targeting like the dan fraser chrome mocks right now yeah dan fraser chrome mocks i also need like the mana vault so i for the budget list stuff i really like box toppers and i love judge foils yeah but those box toppers do not come in below to the you know 170 dollar market correct you know? so i mean i have amassed pretty much of the box topper collection for like the fast mana rocks mm-hmm. um Except for that Dan Frazier. I'm about to pick that up. What uh, does that one go for? It's actually selling for only a hundred bucks right now. Oh, which is a bargain. Insane. Yeah. Uh at these prices, gotta get one. I mean, I remember spending eighty five on my uh borderless foil chrome box, like the one from Double Masters, and I thought that was like pretty high. It is yeah. one thirty right now. So the fact that this is like the foil was you had a chance at getting a foil from the 30th right. anniversary so it just makes it that much more rare i think it's uh, doesn't it seem worth it I, I, it, to me yeah, it seems it, worth it, it does 100 I mean, fast mana is always going to go up in value pretty much true you know? true true like i think that give that a few years i think that's going to be i mean not financial advice but i think that is going to be sick yeah. um and that's why i want to pick one up so yeah it's stuff like that um on more of the cost saving mindset like we've all been doing a little bit uh i've been taking small luxuries and getting basics cool fucking basics Mm -hmm. like i'm gonna buy some of these slick oil lands that come out of this phyrexia set and then i want to go pick up some of those kamigawa lands those were hot as hell ritter's new deck with the uh the which one the mind chip uh reality chip reality chip yeah thank you yeah like all of the mono blue like every single one is it the, feels good it feels good playing all awesome, those foil bro. kamigawa lands yeah it's insane yeah. and so like my, the recent thing i did i think i talked about a little bit was i got my whole draft kit where i got the 10 of each uh galaxy foil basic and they're sick as hell and i had so much satisfaction going to dominary remastered a really shitty draft experience and just looking at all my grixis lands on the table it was very, very fun. So, and you know, that was expensive just getting, you know, 10 of each, but I really like getting these lands. And so picking up a few each here and there, I've been kind of fucking with that lately. Yeah. And you see them all the time because you play with them more. It's not like something totally. that's going to sit in a, in a deck box. Yeah, totally. And like, uh, they've been really good about reprinting all these lands lately, especially all these like two color lands with conditions to come in untapped. They've been reprinting every cycle. There's even one coming out in the newest, uh, Phyrexia will be one cycle. Um, so go check that shit out because they're going to be printing foils and they're going to be cheap as hell. Ritter, how are you blinging? How do you bling? Uh, I got that Playmart. Uh, you know, I just like cool stuff and I like to keep it aesthetically similar throughout the deck. So like, like you were saying where you don't have the stained glass treatment for Rith, it's like, you know, they have all these chase variants of cards, but it's important for me that like within a card type in a deck, If I'm blinging it out, it all be a similar bling. So it's like, if I have 30 creatures in a deck and not all of them have extended art variants, 
it's kind of a hard sell for me to be like, I'm not going to bling out those extended art variants for all this stuff if only five out of my 25 creatures have the, have that treatment. And it's not even like the five creatures I'm going to be tutoring for or something like that that are like central to the deck's theme. Uh, you know, I, I, I think I bling out, you know, what I'm getting at is that I bling out more on vibe. Mm-hmm. Like that's how I make my choices. Right. I fuck with that. Yeah. yeah, you want your theme to like it be cohesive. Yeah, like recently I'm still waiting for it to arrive. So I'm playing a Gix Yogmoth Praetor and you know, mono black. Uh if you're if you're playing black mana in EDH, you should be playing Praetor's Grasp. It's a great card. And the uh basic printing of that has Shulrid talking some shit on Gix, saying, I, I think I think the flavor text is uh, all succeed where Gix failed or something. Ooh. And that just feels straight up disrespectful. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it throwing shade. Disrespectful in a Gix commanded deck. So the bling that I sought for that, and I don't necessarily love the art on this, um, it's the secret lair drop, which is Jin Gataxis. You know, not saying anything about Gix, keeping his name out of his goddamn mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's complete you know, Tamio. In you know, that artwork. And so the Praetor's Grasp can go back into Dina, where it's irrelevant. But <laughs> uh, every line of text matters. <laughs> no, 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 no. Where, where? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Even yeah. the flavor text. Yes. Like you know, I will bling based on flavor text sometimes because, like, you know, you have that uh, say borderless uh, council's judgment. Um, which has a sort of generic flavor text to it, whereas the regular council's judgment flavor text has a little more flavor to it. And that so then therefore that is my preferred version, even though it's not as blingy. You know? I love right, that. Right. that. I've actually been kind of getting more of a kick out of doing that kind of stuff and building a collection of fun things like that mm-hmm. versus just going for the most expensive option. Um like and flavor text, I love reading the flavor text on counter spells because I'm a mo- I'm a blue player and yeah, like, it's real sassy. Yes, it's so sassy. The the I love reading them. I always I love that shit. So I totally get a kick out of that picking the best ones. It's funny how there are some players out there who refuse to bling, like they want the most basic version. And the thing yeah. is, is that when they pull the like the bling or whatever, they turn and they take advantage of people like us. Yeah, they're like. Yeah, I could get a bunch of non-foil cards for this one dumbass foil. Hey, the deck still works the same way. <laughs> I, I respect it. I totally respect it. Yeah, I'd say that. You uh, know, what? there's there is a. I was a card I was looking at today uh, was Leela Hospitality Hostess from Infinity. Are you familiar with this? No. Um, basically, you can uh, look at the top card of your deck anytime, and you can play it off the top of your deck anytime as long as it's a common. Uh, wow. And. So in that sense, like taking the most basic version of every card would be like if you the ninety nine taking the most basic would be blinging out that commander. Yeah, new popper queen. That's actually pretty hot. Yeah, um, there have been times like you'd said when things don't thematically line up. They're like Kamigawa. There, I would say that the showcase foils, like the artwork, the unique style of artwork there is better. Like in general, I think that there are better artworks, but. There was a time when I had bought like the cards, like I'd made a reconfigure deck and I bought the cards for it and I looked at it and I just go, well, these showcase foils don't match literally anything else in the deck, <laughs> but I have a ton of borderless foil stuff. So I actually sold those cards back and repurchased them as borderless foils with the less favorable artwork just to make sure that it all fits. It's got to fit the vibe. Yeah. Love when that. You, yeah. But when you pick up a whole hand, your first hand is all foils. <laughs> Woo! Oh, it's so yeah. good, dude. Hey guys, speaking of vibes, should we go get some magic vibes should, over at the brewery? Magic. Yeah, yeah, we should pack it up. If you guys liked what you're listening to, be sure to subscribe. Check us out on YouTube. Yeah, we got some new subscribers recently. Uh, welcome aboard. We did. Stay tuned. Tell your friends. We have a pile of stickers we're looking to give away for new subscribers. Oh, that's right. We got merch. We have merch. merch. Oh man. So if you uh, if you leave a comment below you will enter a chance to win a new sticker and we'll reach out to you terms and uh, conditions apply Please terms and conditions blah, 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 apply. Blah, 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 blah. two weeks from release i will make a decision and i'll ship one out sick all right thank one. you guys for listening <laughs> just <laughs> one you have one chance <laughs> one chance one sticker all will be one let's go turn some cardboard sideways all right it's Bye. been the mock stars podcast peace peace deuces <laughs>